<laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. Let me remind us of the purpose of this gathering. We're here today to witness the uniting of two individual lives in marriage before God. God's intent for marriage is, is unique, and you might not realize this, but God's intent for marriage is this, that a man and woman would come together, and the man and the fullness of the masculine image of God would come together with the fullness of the fem... Julie, it's your turn. Julie, God has called you to receive Eric as your husband. Do you accept this gift of a husband from God and promise to love him faithfully as long as you both shall live? If so, answer, I do. These two have worked long and hard. We've spent uh, months together. And uh, what's been fun is to see how God has uh, brought the issues up that needed to be discussed. You, you should be in some of these conversations. It's just <laughs> yeah. And what, what we had to deal with with personalities and what that meant for the future. But in the end, here's what they're basing this all on. Not on their own ability, not on their personalities, not on their issues, uh, not even on uh, some vision that they have for themselves, but they base it on what God has for them. And they've chosen three scriptures that really speak to the basis of what they're uh, standing on today. And we have some wonderful nieces that are going to come forward right now. And the first reading you're going to hear is from John 15. So come forward and read that. John 15, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, Ask whatever you wish, and it will be given to you. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he laid down his life for his friends. Thank you. The second and third reading that will be read consecutively are from 2 Corinthians 3 and Proverbs 3. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes on not, on not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He will make your path straight. Thanks. That's awesome. All right. What I'd like to do is uh, help you understand understand how these two have gotten here today. Some of you know some of the story, but what you really don't know is the, the correlation. In doing so, I give my life to you. In doing so, I give my life to you. And all that life entails. And all that life entails. I promise to love and sustain you. <laughs> love and sustain you. In the covenant of marriage. In the covenant of marriage. From this moment on. <laughs> this moment on. To take the good with the bad. To take the good with the bad. To live with you through hardship and success. To live with you through hardship and success. To live with you in the commitment of faith. Live with you in your commitment of faith. And the security of hope. And the security of hope. And the joy of love. And the joy of love. Julie, it's your turn. I, Julie. I, Julie. Take you, Eric, to be my husband. Take you, Eric, to be my husband. In doing so, I give my life to you. In doing so, I give my life to you. you take this one. And all that life entails. And all that life entails. I promise to love and sustain you. In the covenant of marriage, from this moment on, to take the good with the bad, to live with you through hardship and success, 
to live with you in the commitment of faith. To live with you in the commitment of faith. The security of hope. Security of hope. And the joy of love. To this point, you've declared your commitment to one another through uh, reciting your vows and making statements of intent. And now I'd ask you to exchange rings as a reminder and as a true symbol to the world the ring. Uh, of your love. These rings uh, are just that, a reminder and a symbol. And I'd tell you to wear them all the time. Your fingers might swell up, you might get arthritis, <laughs> and you might have to change them. <laughs> but the world needs to see that two people are committed to one another. And they need, to, they need a visual, and they actually need to hear of it. And so I'd say, do your best. Do your best. And these, this is what you really walk away with today as your true commitment uh, before God. This is your sign. Take this ring and place it on Julie's finger and repeat after me. <laughs> Alright, put it on. Julie, I give you this ring. Julie, I give you this ring. With great joy and commitment. With great joy and commitment. May it be a constant reminder. May it be a constant reminder. Of my love for you. Of my love for you. I promise to be your friend. I promise to be your friend. To be your partner in life. To be your partner in life. And to cherish you. And to cherish you. With all my heart. With all my heart. Julie, take this ring, place it on Eric's finger, and repeat after me. <laughs> Eric, I give you this ring. <laughs> Eric, I give you this ring. <laughs> with great joy and commitment. With great joy and commitment. May it be a constant reminder. <laughs> a constant reminder. Of my love for you. Of my love for you. I promise to be your friend. I promise to be your friend. To be your partner in life. To be your partner in life. And to respect you. And to respect you. With all my love. So would you pray with me as we pray over them? God, we thank you for marriage. And we thank you, Lord, for journeys that are... So you two have humbly done this. And thank you for letting me in on this journey. And you've come and you've exchanged everything that's needed to let the world know and God know that you are one today. And so by the authority given to me as a licensed pastor of the Evangelical Covenant Church, I now declare, and we all recognize, before God and this community, that you're a husband and wife. So realize this, before this moment, your lives were separate and they were distinct. But now in this mysterious way, your separate lives, they've been united together. You came in as two individuals and you'll go out as a couple, united by God into one flesh. What God has brought together, let no man separate. You may kiss your bride. <laughs> <laughs> So now may the God of hope fill you with all peace and joy as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Family and friends, it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you for the very, very first time, Eric and Julie Anderson. Yeah. <laughs>